Monday, June 5th, 2023, the Moortown Select Board here at uh, 79th School Street at the John Pogba Meeting Room. Um, 35 years, you can get a room named after you. So, Ray, you, you were close, Ray. You were close. 20, 25. Um, so, we have general public comment, and then we have a little change on the agenda. Um, Clark has to go with the wastewater, so Vermont Security, if you don't mind, just be about 15 minutes and then you'll be up. Is that okay? Um, and then we can get back on track on the agenda with Stefan. But let's first go for general public comment. Uh, Ray, I saw you come in first. Are you here for that? I'm just here for the storm water. Storm, okay. Very good. Um, yes. Yes. I just uh, wanted a few minutes of your time about the town hall custodian position. Um, so I haven't changed anything from that draft um, write-up that I gave you guys. And what I was thinking is I would go ahead and, well, I'm not sure if I'm the one that should do it or town offices, but start advertising just to see if anyone's interested in it as it's written. And then if we don't get any um, interest in the next month, six weeks, we could look at sort of that, uh, taking the cleaning piece out of it and outsourcing that. So I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't sure if I should post in Front Porch Forum or um, papers or if that's Sasha, you office. guys are usually working with the papers. Why don't you guys, can you guys work together on that? Because sure. Because we, we may even have a contract that we get a little cheaper, so. Uh, yeah. Work together with that. Okay. Out. But you're good with what I talked about the last time I was here. I didn't change it too much other than to take some obsolete language out. But I have copies if you want to look at it now. No, I think we reviewed it all. Yeah, we yeah. yeah. went through your main okay. stuff that should have been changed, yeah. I think, at one point. Anyway. And then I think it would be good to come back at a different meeting on the agenda to just talk about the cleaning in general. Um, you know, I reached out to Martin just to talk about cleaning the town garage, and I think we could include that in this job description. Um, but they were thinking twice a month. We get our library cleaned once a month. Town offices get cleaned once a week. So just figuring out if it makes sense to have one cleaning service take care of all the town buildings or if we want to keep having these separate That's positions good. doing it. Um, but that could be just an agenda oh. item. And, I think that's a good idea. And that's certainly something to look at. Yeah. Consolidation to uh, be able to save some money and. Yeah, or like I say, maybe someone who wanted this custodian position as written, and they'll be happy to take on the town garage cleaning, but if not, it's just something to consider. So that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So I'll work with Sasha to start advertising that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Thanks. No, that's it. All right, um, let me just look online, make sure we have a... All right, um, so we're gonna go ahead then and move forward. Um, as again, I said, we'll uh, move with the wastewater. Clark, can you go ahead and introduce uh, Emily for us as well? Emily Hackett is with the State Clean Water Revolving Fund and she has been here at least once before, Emily, I think. I don't think I've been to the slot board before, but I, okay. I get all the majority of the village meetings. Um, so I'm also in charge of the ARPA uh, grant as well for the village, water and wastewater projects. So yeah, and this is, um, um, we're not here to update about that today anyway, but um, the loan application has been pending for a long time and we've been waiting for data and information to come back from Otter Creek, which we finally got um, just after the last select board meeting, um, and because of the holiday, we weren't able to come back last Monday. So we're here today. Um, basically, I have a copy of the application. Um, this, now, these are not stable, so you can just kind of take it. It's 12 pages long, and it's not, you know, I don't, it's not, I didn't bring it up here for you to kind of go through exhaustively, but just kind of to let you know that we're, um, the zero interest loan amount that has been determined is, that is just an oh, actually, uh, Tom, could you give that back to me? For some reason, that I have this to now, I'll it back. Um, is 91,785 is the amount that um, is going to, that Otter Creek is going to be um, charging for the work for the study for the wastewater um, program. 
And so the monies that are available for that are, um, they, they do run out periodically. And so we're running up against the deadline, as Emily knows. And so I mentioned this a few weeks ago when I was in here with a little bit of frustration in terms of what was going on with Otter Creek, but these days things seem to be moving along pretty well and moving towards hopefully doing the, um, the test pits within um, the next couple of weeks or so. And um, I left a message for Martin about that in terms of the excavator. But in order to submit the application, we need signatures from all of the select board members. And Tom, I mentioned that we needed an alternative signature and you were concerned about what that meant to you um, for that. And it's uh, basically just to have another contact if for some reason I'm a, a bit unavailable or become unavailable during the, the course of the project. Uh, so there's no specific liability that you're taking on here. Thanks. Being <laughs> um, you're basically just another person um, to have a contact with. Um, and we could have come up with someone on the committee, but I felt that it was important because of, you know, it's a relatively big deal here to have the, you know, to have your sign on. I agree. So, um, so that is so. Sure, so your name is on there, and the address for the I put the address for the town office here. Um, put the address on there. And so what I would be would like you to do is to sign up the sign off um, page here for you to. to to do. And so before we do that, obviously, if you have questions or concerns, and Emily, if you want to mention anything in particular that uh, I yeah, either I mean, the, So, yeah, so we have what's called an intended use plan, and that runs with the fiscal year from July 1st to the end of June. And every year we have subsidy, and the village projects get a hundred and up to $125,000 subsidy per project per year. And so we, we're getting close to the end of our, this IUP. And so we're kind of, the money is dwindling in that subsidy pot. So we want to make sure that more town gets the subsidy for that 92,000 um, in order to continue moving forward with the project. That subsidy is a 100% forgiveness loan. So that subsidy, you know, doesn't get paid back, it's subsidy. Um, we can't call it a grant, otherwise it would be lots more paperwork for you and for us, just like the ARPA right now that I am very deep into. Um, but yeah, if, if you guys have any questions, and what will happen is the project progresses once the new IUP is adopted, which won't be July 1st, it may be more like July, August, then the project is eligible in the next step to get another $125,000 for the year. And it might be more, it might be a little less, I'm not sure what the IUP says this year um, for the coming year. Um, I don't think it's gonna change much from what I'm understanding, but that way the project can continue to work and you guys are getting the, the biggest bang for your buck in terms of the subsidy available to the town for the project. And that way you're not having to touch the ARPA money right now um, and it can sit there for construction. Cool. Uh, so we'll sign that tonight, get that off to you in the morning, and then we are set with that subsidy? Yeah, it goes to Tom Brown, and Tom will work with the bond bank. Um, that's kind of the financial side of it, and more the technical side. So Tom Brown will do the paperwork and send stuff over to the bond bank. I think that takes a little time um, to do, and if he has any more questions or things he might need, he will contact uh, Clark directly um, and probably CC you uh, on it as well. And that's kind of how the process works um, in, in Clean Water SRF. There's the three steps, step one being planning, which is where you guys are in the preliminary engineering report phase. Um, then there's an environmental review that has to be done at the end of step one. And then step two is design and step three is construction. So this subsidy is to cover that preliminary engineering report and environmental uh, review. So that'll get us all the way through step one. Okay. Questions around the board, uh, table? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is Thank the signature you. page. And You're welcome. That, uh, what we need is just your signature and your printed name. Um,
Yeah, thanks. I mean, this is something that uh, should have happened months ago, so um, I'm sorry it's taken this long to get through. But things with Otter Creek then have straightened out? Um, yeah, um, for the most part, we're, um, you know, we are actually trying to get some response um, back from Otter Creek for a couple of questions that have come up in the last couple of days. So um, hopefully we'll get back in touch with this by tomorrow. Because we had originally uh, discussed digging the test pits next week. But there's a considerable number of people that need to be present for that, uh, both from Otter Creek and from the state, and obviously landowners, property owners, public members of the committee. So that's something that uh, you know, we're you know, hoping to align. And I'm not sure it will happen next week because of the tight time frame. And so I you know, need to talk with Martin and uh, see what kind of availability I don't know, Stephen, if you guys have any big projects coming up in the next uh, We are out on the road for good and we're yeah. still at <coughs> fairly close, we're just up the top of the Yeah, I saw that yesterday, yeah. or the other day. I know we have some things that are, you know, coming down, like, probably sooner than later, but I think we still have a, a couple weeks. Okay. That's a guess. Don't quote me, please. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I know. And it wasn't, you know, I appreciate you mentioning that. I'm not trying to get anybody to commit to anything at this point. So. Um, Emily, any other questions or comments at this point that you want to, or um, comments that you want to put forth? Um, well, I think just the ARPA grant real, real quick. Um, I'm, what I'm going to do is send over the grant language and the deliverables table, which I think Clark has seen. Um, and that way the select board can start reviewing uh, the language and ask any questions from the grant side because um, that tends to take a, a few days to get answers back on questions related to the grant language. Um, the technical part, as soon as we dig these test fits, I can start to write that part up. Um, we'll have a better understanding of uh, what, the, what the project is probably going to entail. Um, so that should, that's forthcoming. Well, good. Um, we look forward to that. We look, uh, thank you for joining us tonight and getting us up to, uh, or catching up on this grant or uh, subsidy, excuse me. Uh, we appreciate that. And certainly Clark or myself are available if you have any questions about that. Okay, sounds great. All right. Thanks a lot, Emily. Much obliged. Good thank luck you. with thank the rest you. of your meetings. Yes. <laughs> Hope they're as easy as this. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. All right. Very good. Thank you, Clark. <laughs> All right, up next we have um, Vermont Security. Yep, sir. Sure. Yep, my name is Mike Wheeler. Mike Wheeler, all right. I'm the director of uh, field services for Vermont Security. You guys scoot over here so everyone yeah. has. Yeah. So uh, Mike is here uh, tonight to talk about uh, security. Um, yeah. oh. Last year we had some money in the budget. Uh, we didn't spend on uh, security cameras and such, but there are some grants available. So Sherilyn's been working with Mike on a couple things, but yep. Mike, if you want to go ahead and uh, sure. share with, with us. Yep, so um, what we had sort of talked about with Sherilyn when we were here uh, last week was uh, some, some perimeter coverage video mm -hmm. on the outside. So essentially, uh, well, essentially it's two exterior cameras and two interior cameras, um, just based on what she was describing as the security concerns for the building. Um, both of um, the exterior cameras we mounted on that south corner was sort of the thinking that we had, since that would get us a nice shot of down the road there. And the, I think there's a gazebo mm -hmm. type, that's sort of an area of concern, it sounded like. Um, and then another one facing back this way to catch the drive coming up and the parking area. Um, but that would also look kind of across this side entrance here, the main entrance. Um, and then in here, just one for the, the meeting room, and then one for the general office area. Um, Coming and it, back towards the entrance, like... Uh, yeah, well, we were kind of going. thinking, you know, sort of just on the other side of this, uh, of this wall. Okay, going down towards the actual entrance. Yeah, exactly, so we'll just get that sort of common area there in the right area. Yeah. Yep. And then the one for in here, you know, would probably be in this corner. Right. Because that's going to give you the best part of that view. Too. view. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, we put an option on the estimate for a, a lock for the utility room where we would plan to have the recorder. Um, and that would allow you to just sort of track and control access to that room a little bit. Um, so, yeah, any questions? I mean, I'm here to <coughs> Yeah, Cheryl, just yeah. What about the keypads for the door? We did we did touch on that briefly, and that is um, you know that's a, that's an estimate that we could um, provide you with any time. But um, the issue here with these doors is that the way the the locks that you have here are mortise style locks, right. and so that kind of puts you in a commercial access control sort of um, scenario where you you can't just swap out the handle set and the lock like you can with the IT closet or the utility room. Um, so it would, it would involve some wiring and some some exterior, probably some conduit runs and installing electric strikes and stuff like that. And typically those installs are between three and 4,000 per door. Um, so we presented the video quote because I know that was like the top concern. Um, and if, you know, getting set up with proper access control so that you're locking and unlocking on a schedule and you're, you're, the idea would be that you would keep the doors locked 24 seven and buzz people in, visitors in, um, and sort of and be able that's to that's not the keypad. That would be the keypad, yep. Oh, that, okay. that would be, yeah, the keypad is a typical, or a card reader right. is okay. a typical component. Okay. Um, but the so buzz in is the same thing? Or? The buzz in would be part of that plan, yep. Okay. yep. So, the way that we would probably design that is that somebody coming to the to the regular um, guest entrance would ring a bell, and then on the receptionist desk there'd be a screen where a video feed comes up, and then there's two-way audio between the person at the door and the receptionist, and then they can choose to unlock the door from there. Um, so we weren't really sure if that was really part of the initial sort of phase one thinking about security for here, but I mean that would obviously enhance the security for this building a lot. Um, so, if that's if that's something you're interested in, if it makes sense, if if it makes sense that video is sort of the first thing, right. because you're just kind of thinking about right. what's going on around the building and sort of protecting yourself and being able to, um, you know, have evidence or whatever of, of things happening. Now, is, is there a way the video can? Obviously, we want to record it, but can there be a monitor as well yep. that yep. somebody can monitor it? Yes, okay. a monitor. Okay. You can remotely connect to the system to view the live feed or playback. Um, you can do that from any of the computers in here okay. or, or even off-site. Okay. Yeah. question? What, Sasha, you have, did you have another question? Or I thought I should begin it. Yeah, well, we touched on the access control stuff a little bit when we were here, but... Um, we didn't really want to freak anyone out with a huge number, you know, and I think if video is your your first concern or if that makes the most sense, and I think that does make the most sense from a security standpoint um, to start with that, um, that's how we wanted to sort of give you right. that first option and go from there. Right, you've been working around, one, you're familiar with what we do here, but also you've been out now in the community doing some security stuff. What, uh, what are you seeing and what, what, what do you think? Yeah, um, as far as a necessity for it? Yeah, well, yeah, and how would what you see in other places, do you think just the security of the cameras is sufficient to start? Or I, I think that's a good start, yeah, uh, from what I've seen. You know, just going to the courthouse and right. things like that. You know, it's a little more elaborate at the courthouse, but I right. think it's, I think it could be what he has presented here. Seem to be in line with with everything else. Mm -hmm. Do you have lock for the office entrance? Like so, people can come in here, but they can't go in there, or is that this door is open, that door is open? That door is open. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, right. That's a, that's another way of thinking about it. You can make that be your sort of secure point, but it depends right. on how the flow of things is here yeah. day to okay. day. I'm just curious. The other um, element of security is obviously an alarm system, which. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on you know, depending on wh what your concerns are for the property, um, that will sort of determine wh what route you go next after video. Um, if it's after hour security you're thinking about, then I think an alarm system makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. the locks that you have in place are secure mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that these doors will allow, right? With the glass.
glass and everything, mm -hmm. but allowing for a monitored alarm system for anything that's happening after hours would be, you know, that that's where you know an alarm system would come into play. But if the bigger concern is while you're here working, and the concern is for life safety of the staff, then that would be that that's an access control solution. Right. And you could pair that with a panic button solution too. So you could have either mobile wireless panic buttons so that if there was a scenario where people felt unsafe, they could activate the those the silent alarm. alarm. Yeah, that would go right to the police. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm more concerned with the daytime stuff. Yeah. yeah. Things are here. I don't really, we haven't had a problem with any kind of yeah. breaking in or burglary, but we have had some odd fellows or, or people through. Confronting staff. Right. Yeah. 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 So that, that is certainly a concern. Um, so you had a quote for those Yeah, Yeah, yep. Have you, has anyone seen that? Or have, I, I did send that to Cheryl Lynn, but you, you're welcome to copy that I have. And um, I can also forward it to anyone who, who wants that information. If you could forward it to Sasha, Sasha and sure. then she'll send it out to the whole board. Uh, what's the time frame for something like this? Usually in a couple weeks. At the, at the most, we can schedule something. This is a most likely a one-day install, um, so that's usually something we can manage to schedule in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. What brand of camera do you guys use? Uh, we use Dawa USA. They're they're one of the larger like global manufacturers. A lot of other brands use their products to like they kind of white label their their products, but. Um, the regional support that they give us and the warranties are really good, so that's something we like to be able to pass down to to customers. Is is there a yearly maintenance on this, or there is how do you maintain this? Yep, um, we we would maintain remote connectivity to the system to install firmware updates and, and be able to remotely assist you with anything. So there's a a service plan basically that that's five dollars per channel per month. So in this case, you'd be looking at $20 a month right. um, for the features that are listed there. And you can see that that's optional. But what we found is that um, with most video systems, it's something that our clients you know, have installed and then they don't think about it until something happens. And then that's the, maybe the first time that they go to interact with the system. So it's kind of an automatic, like they call us for the, the first time it happens and then maybe they're not, you know, fully Coming for a year engaged and then again yeah. and again, you know. So um, that's why we kind of offer that sort of ongoing support plan. Um, it's optional. You know, you can choose, it, it does come with an extended warranty and there's a few other features in the list there um, for that um, service plan. Um, but you could also just choose to pay for a service as, as issues arise, you know, mm -hmm. we'll come out and maintain the system for sure. We're right in Montpelier, I don't know if you know that. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're a local service provider, so we've got other customers in more town. We've got, you know, customers in this area. And we're out on the road every day, so. How long does a system like that last? Ten years. Ten years or more. Um, the cameras themselves may last longer than that. Um, the, hard, the, the recorder has a mechanical hard drive in it. Mm -hmm. That's probably the biggest, that and the power supply, which is replaceable. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that you see fail in, in a video recorder. But um, I think you could expect 10 years out of it with proper maintenance and, yeah. and it's not exposed Back to dust. Yeah, the dust every once yeah, in a yeah, while. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. Do they have their own uh, like battery backup if the power goes out? How does that what happens? With it's not built in. Typically, the um, the recorder is is um, uh, it doesn't have that much kind of bulk to it because you would need a pretty significant um, battery size to really back up a a video recorder, which is kind of like a computer. So if you imagine like a desktop computer, it has similar power requirements to that. Mm -hmm. So if you were to connect that system to your standard like UPS battery backup that you might have in an office, you out. might get, you know, two minutes out of it. Yeah. You could invest in like a serious like server grade battery backup if you know if you wanted to, but that would be yeah. 
some magnitude of a bigger expense. You know, probably yeah, like four grand or something, like nine thousand dollars. Yeah, sure. You can probably, depending on the equipment that you need to back up, but just for a video system, you'd probably yeah. spend two or three couple grand to do that. Yeah, a couple hours probably. Right. Whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. Two hour backup or something. You said it has similar power draw as a. Computer. Yeah, something like that. Oh. Yeah, similar. I know that some of the instances you know, we just bought one at the fire station it was like fifteen hundred. It lasts like an hour if you're not. Yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. You know, working it hard, so an hour's you know. Yeah. Typically, the power's not out for much more than that right here. Right. Fifteen, fifteen hundred bucks would give you an hour. I can see that. Yeah. Okay. When you as you add more cameras, there's a couple different components because the cameras need power too. Yeah. So there's there's a, a, a switch either built into the recorder or separate from that that's powering those cameras as well. Um, so, you know, don't quote me on, on it. I mean, it depends. I know things have gotten more efficient too, so, you know, my thinking might be five or six years behind at this point, but... Um, but that being said, the, the backup battery is not part of this. Okay. Um, yes. cool. yeah. All right, so why don't we, um, if you could send Sasha that. Um, so yeah, we, we what's your email, Sasha? Yeah. M select board. Select board. M select board. M. M select one. Yeah. Okay. Martown BT. Okay. And Sharon said that that passive grant, the funds run out, so the quicker that if you guys are going to do this, the quicker she gets it applied for, the better the odds. All right. So yeah, we will certainly do that the next. Take a look at it this meeting and make a decision by the next. Because that was, which she said it was like $3,700? Yeah, 30 something. Of course, it's five, five grand. Of course, <laughs> five grand, right. That's what we need to discuss it later. But, yeah. Um, okay. Any other questions from Mike? Okay, cool. Yeah, well, let us know. I mean, feel free to call us anytime. We're happy to be a resource for you guys, regardless of what you decide. Any other references, too? Oh, yeah, references, right. Um, I definitely have a bunch. I can. Gather those together. Can I send just, this? Yeah, you send a couple of sessions. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. And if you have municipalities or something, yep. send them. Please. All righty, thank you so right. much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah, have a great night. You yeah. too. Thanks. Yeah. We have Mr. Stefan Kratz um, coming from the fire department. I just want to make that. Yes. And um, you have some. Well, I'm to her, so she... Me and John will tell you how much I Then we'll get a call. Hey, do you want that? I don't know. Uh, so, Stefan, you have the scuba quotes for us. I do. Uh, I went to uh, three different companies to request them. Uh, the, the lowest bidder came in at 9245 but it's a different brand to what the other six we have are. Uh, so the, the, the middle of the road um, is Reynolds and Sons, which has the MSA pack to match what we have already. And it was only $94.59 more expensive to keep what we have. So my suggestion would be to go with the MSA to match the rest of what we have so we don't have one odd ball mm -hmm. out for $94. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense. Yes. Um, I think that's what we were trying to do to begin with, is kind of get everything matched it, it, up. Right? Exactly, exactly. That's why I, just, I wanted to, to bring it to you guys. 93.40, roughly. 93. 93.59.59. <laughs> <laughs> I'm passing a little. That's, that's pretty good, though. <laughs> so, yeah, that was uh, where I was at with that. Um, I don't know. I think that passed at the town meeting, right? It did. Yeah. So and I believe that it was ten grand or less. So yeah. we're, we're inside yeah. that number. Right. So check so and check. <laughs> you uh, can go ahead and, unless anyone has any concerns about it. Go ahead and order. We don't need a, We don't need anything because it's already been approved, right? right. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's perfect. I just, it's always good to get the blessing. Yeah. yeah. No, I really appreciate that. And, um, Thank you for taking time. Anything else with the fire department? We have a couple extra minutes. I here. do. I have a, a question about when we were talking about the fire truck, we talked to uh, the source and he had that uh, the down payment bond. Oh, program. right now? Yeah. Um, 
I was wondering, he happened to be chatting with me the other day, and he's like, oh, you guys ever put that, that 200 grand in, and it earns 3% in there, so I was like, oh, we should get it in there to, to get it earning money. Yeah, what's, um, and I know that uh, the, the contract was approved, or the, the bond insurance okay. and everything was approved. Just, I thought the money was already there to be on yeah, the field. Yeah. So let's ask Cheryl Lynn about that, and I know the committee, I think, talked about that. I think their, their recommendation, the finance committee, John, do you remember? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, in, in terms of um, the, the uh, 200,000. Right. But, uh, Did we discuss putting it into the, the bond program? I, I actually, I missed that meeting. Uh, well, let's uh, so, see I, if I there was that. From the minutes. For some reason, I thought early on that it was. What's that? I don't remember. Yeah. Well, we can have them look at it. We know what it is. Right. It's, it's, I guess, at three percent on the two hundred thousand. If we have it, I think there was a there was a might have been a question, Stefan, about um, our how it was coming out in the ARPA. So I think that might have there may be a some reason why it hasn't happened, but we'll we can find that out. And if it hasn't, I think we should, um, if we're going to go ahead with the that 200K on it, we might as well do it to get the... Well, that's what I said, the 200K at 3%, that's... How much? What? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, what is that, $6,000? $6,000? Yeah. 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 Either that or $6,000. Yeah. 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 I'm like, all the zeros. There's too many zeros for me in that. I've never seen that kind of money. Um, but I just, I'd like it to, you know, make money if it can. I'd, nope, thanks for uh, bringing that up. Uh, and other than that, we're, uh, we're been working on the fleet. They're nickel and diming us, but we're still within, within budget, but we're gonna see a, a pretty substantial bill from McLeod's. Getting them all inspected is gonna cost roughly $4,000. They all have, Little things, a couple of them had some fairly big things wrong with them for inspection. So, and how many trucks is that? Four. Four and four thousand. About a thousand of these, give or take. Well, it's, it's a lot of money, but it's. Um, Anything with a truck that size, you know, yeah, that it's, 200, it's 200 for this and 400 for that. It's, it's crazy, but it is. But it has to be done, it has to be inspected. Things have been good. Obviously, we're. We're sure staff, but that's kind of common. Have you um, advertised anything or done anything recently? We, uh, we we're just talking. We have a meeting tomorrow night. We're going to try to work something up to try to get into the Valley Reporter and, and draft up a front for forum post. And yeah. Hey, you have, you know, a few times a month he can help and, you know, start with that and see if we can get any. Uh, you talk about the benefits that you guys have. It's true, but. There's very few, but one of them is, is a big one, you know, being able to, to go skiing for nothing. Is, yeah, I mean, I think that's it's something there. It's a good deal. We were lucky in the mountains to do that. Absolutely. Did you guys do the open house? Yes, we did do the, the Operation May Day open house three weeks ago, four weeks ago. My mind's shot, but it was a statewide uh, outreach project to, have as many fire routes as open that day for recruitment. People come in, just see the equipment. We had three people stop, I'll call it a win. Um, Next time those type of things, let us know beforehand so we can yeah, they, talk about the meeting. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Some of us might attend just to show a little support. support. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's a good idea. Um, I don't think this. Unless you have anything else. I don't think I have anything uh, big going on. Um, on a somewhat separate note, going back, uh, have we considered quoting out the uh, the camera system, like putting out an RFP for it? Yeah, we'll have to look at three. We actually did last year. So we'll look, but we'll probably re send out some uh, RFPs on that to just to make sure that we're in line with our own policies. Absolutely. No, I just, another company that's not them came and installed a professional grade system at my home. So I, 
I became an expert overnight, it turns out. Well, I'll share um, that with Sasha, who the, that committee is, and maybe we can send something out to them. I think there's probably one in Burlington, too. But uh, I think it's a good idea for the security, but uh, let's just take a look and see what else we're out there. Like I said, we had some quotes from, from last year, I think, that were. That were higher than this one, I mean, where, I can't uh, remember. remember. Right, and, and things have changed so much. I just, yeah, that seems reasonable. Yeah, I think so. It, it seems, yeah. I just wanted to, yeah. to throw it out there. There's, there's, you know, it's not like we're stuck with one, one company necessarily. Yep. Excellent. Well, that's I, it. I'll get out of your hair. All right, stop all these. All right, so we have um, RFP for the work stormwater projects. John, will you do a little bit? On Point Engineering and Consulting LLC, which is Ray. <laughs> they asked for a lot of information on their RFPs. So this can the only one. Say again? I checked my email before. Yeah, we brought email. What do you think, John? So the scope of the work uh, is um, basically 240 hours at $65 an hour, 15600 Add to duct hourly rate of $65 an hour. Payment will be for actual hours worked as approved by the select board. W9 form and certificates of insurance will be submitted prior to starting work. And um, so that's it. And that's right within. And so that, I think, is within the budget, right? And this is yes. for uh, everyone. <laughs> The project here in the uh, wastewater yeah, project. Stormwater. 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 Yeah, watch that one. We get wa wastewater and stormwater. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Um, so, right, when uh, you'll be able to start as soon as they're there on the ground? Yeah, I think they're supposed to be here at the end of the month. Yeah. And you'll be able there's to. Some, there's some preliminary work. I would need to talk to engineers about you know, products that they're using, things like that. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping that um, things are wrapping up in St. John's very, pretty quickly. That uh, then, uh, All right. cover this. Uh, eat that, eat that. Um, you know, my intention is that you know I will cover this job, and, and uh, you know, for as I'm hoping that the 240 hours is on the high side. I think once they get going after a few weeks, and I don't intend to be out here uh, every day unless you know unless I have to. If I, if they're doing their job, then you won't need me, right? right. And that's fine with me. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's completely fine with me. But uh, I do want to be here to make sure it gets done. That's my whole intention. Mm -hmm. I'm working for the select board, and it's a, you know I'm the clerk. You guys are the manager, basically. I will need a contact from the select board to make decisions as they come up, because I, I can't make the decisions. Okay. Well, I, I don't think we could find a better person um, to do it. Ray's familiar with the project. Mm -hmm. um, Ray knows us. We know Ray very well. Ray has always performed well above board. Um, so I'd move that we accept the proposal that John read out from On Point Engineering Consulting um, on the terms submitted. Second motion. Thank you, Robin. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor, vote aye. 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 Great, thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Um, and we will discuss, we'll figure out, a, I don't know, John, do you want to do the contact on this project? Sure. All right, why don't we go ahead and John will be the, the contact, of course, is really the huge John will bring it to us, but most things John knows where we set and, and what decisions he should be making. Um, today is 6 
Six, 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 five. Six, five. Five, five, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 23, all right. So, so what I really like, uh, John, is just to, uh, if you get an update on your schedule, if they're, when they're going to be here, you know. Okay. And, and let the engineer, you know, Andre, and, and know that I'm going to be the clerk. Okay. I'll take it. Yeah. Yep. We'll do. So, uh, uh, so Greg reached out to me from the school uh, last week when I was mowing. Uh, they're just kind of looking to be brought into the loop because they're going to have contractors in and out of the school who want to make sure that the access would be available. And I just remembered it when you guys were talking yeah, about Yeah, so I, I think it's a good idea before the contractor gets here to have some sort of uh, meeting with all, the, with all the parties. Yep, absolutely. No, so we're just, we're just like, is it, is it going this year? And I told yep. them I believed it was. And yeah. Yeah, I'll always have access to the right next time we drive. Yeah, I'll work like that out. After John gives the hand off. And, yep. Um, and then just we'll see, what, you know, every, you yeah, know, we'll see how it depends how it's going. Stop it when you can here at the meetings, but we may ask you to come in and just give us a, sure. an update or yep. kind of how it looks out there. I usually, you know, make out a daily report and send it to the session or something. All right. Perfect. Good. All right. Excellent. All right. Thank, Thank you, you right. All right. Good to see you. Yep. So thanks yeah. again. I never see you. I'll leave the light on the for you. See you guys. Thank you. Yours, Ray. I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> see. All right. So, uh, Sasha, what do you have for reports for us? Reports for you guys and choose those. Um, New Mossop asked, sent an email requesting appointment for the rec committee. He's interested in serving on that. All right, did you forward that to Chris? Yes. Okay. Yep, and there is a spot available. Okay. Um, the only other thing I had was um, I did the updates on the personal policy. Were you guys good with that? Because I can add it to your stuff to sign. Yeah, I think it's as long as it was as. And the sheriff's percent. contract is in the file for signatures tonight, too. The um, contract? Sheriff. The sheriff. Oh, yeah, okay. And then number it lodged the grand list, so that'll be in the file for. And then Sean gave me the Merck grant agreement. And it's a signature. And that's about all I have. A lot of signatures then, so. Oh, the week. Uh, Don asked me about this. Did you see the email? Yeah, I did. Um, the question was as far as meetings in July. You had a good point. July 3rd, uh, the first Monday is July 3rd. So I think most people, myself included, probably are doing other things on July 3rd, um, Tuesday, July 4th. Or, yeah. So that doesn't even do much better. We want to meet on the 10th, which is the next Monday. Probably the best, right? Okay. You have to decide that right now. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and, and decide that? Okay. And if you, we can't make it, and I'm not, I should there, but again, we'll have light agendas, so if you can't, okay. you can't, but yeah. I think I it's better than that. Last resort. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's I'm sure I can put it in. Yeah. I can put um, the boss on board. It's very important to have the boss on board. Happy <laughs> wife, happy wife. Um, okay. And so, so that will be good there. Um, so Sasha, was there anything else? So go ahead and yeah, I think like that's. Them. And so yeah, put that out a couple times um, if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, Robin, do you have anything? No. Kelly, Miss Kelly. I yeah. do. Okay. So I had a nice chat with Bobby Halpin about ATVs okay. on the roads. So I actually, just basically to get a better idea of like what he was talking about. Okay, okay. and just so we know, who is Bobby Halpin? He sent an email to uh, the board okay. asking about yeah. opening up. Yep, yeah. he's a resident here in town. Yeah, yeah he, he lives up on the common. Yeah, he lives on the common. Um, 
so in essence, right now, opening up the roads in essence doesn't change anything that people are already doing. But if it was something we wanted to do more of and connect with a club, they will um, do signage. Um, there's opportunities for funding to do some work on some of the roads. From what I understood, there's also enforcement that comes along with that, which is not through the SP. It's actually through Fishing Game. So they monitor most of BASA's stuff. So they would, in essence, enforce yeah. everything. So, <clears throat> and it wasn't the feeling I got. I actually, I said, come and get on the agenda. So I don't know if he's done that or not to come in. I said it would probably be better for him to explain it. Yeah, I mean, I think we could hear, hear from him the other thing. I think this would be a good topic when we when we have um, some type of open house or we decide mm -hmm. on one of those fifth Mondays that we have or we want to have something that this would be a good topic of discussion to get try to get everything to town wide. Yeah. Yeah. But it would be nice um, if you want to reach out to him again and have him talk with Sasha or get a time when, when we're all here. It would be nice to hear it from someone who's done it and that was it. That we could yeah, because they, uh, I can't remember what town they worked on it with. They did it with another town, I think. Yeah, so, so let's see if it can be done. You know, I'm open either way, but listening at least to what people have to say and get people's opinions on it. And yeah, I'd certainly be willing to what he has to say. I mean, at least I can have information to go back to people on the road and say, hey, you know, this is the situation, what's your opinion? Right. But I'm going to totally divert to the people that I speak with that, you know, are going to be most impacted by it. Yeah. I okay. think you're very much. Yeah. He's a perfect example. Because you know. our property borders oh, like the main of, road. Yeah, the main road. Right? Completely. But I think the night, the <laughs> piece that really tied it in was that enforcement piece that kind of sounded right. tied yeah, that's, a, the club. that's a great thing. And it's not through VSP. Yeah. My biggest concern is just the scope of the ATVs now. I mean, that kid doing the excavation on our land, I mean, you know, hit his unit goes zero to 60, you know, faster than a Corvette. I mean, it weighs like, you know, 1,200 pounds or something. It's just, it's just a huge beast of a machine, you know, and it's opening up trails to that kind of unit. That's something we've got to consider. You know, everyone's thinking the little tiny ATVs, but I mean, this is a four-seater, it's 20 feet long, and it's, it's, it can climb up a rock wall, basically. Yeah, no, I think a new, so, you know, it's, uh, so we need to go slow with it, but I think it's good to get information, but, okay. And I mean, the people love to have that are doing in. it, are, yeah. I mean, they're doing it already anyway. Yeah. Right. So, right. yeah. There's well, that's a, I mean, without enforcement. Right, without right. enforcement, yeah. So, right. if we could get some consensus of people who live in the area, it, it just seems like it would be somewhat difficult. I mean, just the, the problems we're having on that little people trail on the Coffin Road or whatever, you know. Oh, yeah, no, it's just difficult to get consensus yeah. on. Yeah, we know that. So, but, um, but I, I think, think it's a great opportunity. You know, if I think, it's all about education to people yeah. listening and willing to listen. Um, yeah. yeah, I would say have him come in if you'd like to. I'd definitely get like to hear what he's yeah, doing, yeah. and where he's thinking about, you know, and we'll refresh you on the map of the starting points. And, yeah. and he wasn't thinking like everything either. Yeah. You know, right. he was in essence thinking of it, it gets slow from yeah. what I got, you know, try it out in a few places and see. Well, that tells me to have a little experience doing it because yeah. that's how it works. I mean, if you try yeah. to take the whole thing, it's not going to work. We got to show that you are responsible because, uh, you know, there's a perception out there that people on ATVs are crazy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. nuts, but it can be done, anything can be done right if it's um, handled appropriately with all parties, including us mm -hmm. and ATVers. 
Okay. Anything else, Kelly? No, that's it. John, what's up? Okay, I spoke with uh, Cal Blodgett, and um, as we figured, he doesn't he doesn't want to cut the trees. So, uh oh. Um, so, but he did ask how wide it was going to be, and I didn't know if we ever really decided. I think it's on that. Um, it's on the agreement, and I think it's one. Is it one or two? Um, is it whatever. What's the normal trail? Is it normal? I thought the normal trail was two rods. Two rods, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, because we didn't want anything special one way or another when we were dealing with them. We wanted to, all right, whatever's norm, let's stay right. with the norm. So right. it's too wide. And I think we should cut it too wide. So it's cut and then push it out to too wide. Oh, well, this is that trail. This is access to someone's property or? Yeah, well, it was. Okay. Rerouting an old and they could throw a town trail, trail. Yeah. right? Right, okay. Trail, uh, what, right. what number is it now, John? Oh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> trail, yeah. yeah. Where is it located? Blot, uh, Blodgett's on more time out on the road, okay. And it's before there's a ribbon that's hanging, uh, before you get if you're headed, um, east. Before you get to Blodgett's house, okay. he'll see a, a ribbon. All right. So, hang on a so he, doesn't, he doesn't want to cut it himself. No. Okay. So well, first Nancy said, no, he's too old. <laughs> um, well, maybe that's something Travis wanted to get out there and do for us? Probably not. I, I would doubt. I would doubt yeah. as well. Um, all right, so let's talk to. Uh, to Martin and see when maybe that's something this winter they can do. Um, you know, when you know, who knows, they're often busy, but sometimes they got early winter, you know, there's right. time yeah. it's frozen, they can cut. Um, it, and we could all take it, actually, would be do good if we took a walk up there again. I mean, I know where it is, but if we did it just so we could remember, I don't, I don't think there was a lot of trees there, it just wasn't at first. I was. You know, surprised that it's, it's a fairly barren area. It's a hill, so uh, rocky hill. That wouldn't be much, but we should take a walk over there, get Martin to go with us, and um, you know, make some time. So maybe yeah. uh, prior to one of the next meetings or something, we can just, or if everyone wants to go, we can just warn it that we're going over there, walk it. Um, and yeah. so everyone is aware of it. Well, I'll be totally yeah. Happy. More than happy to take a look at it, for sure. All right, so we'll do that in the next, uh, probably July is not good, but sometime in August, we'll try to figure that out when okay. we can get over there. Or anyone can go so anytime you want. Is it really called the Blodgett Trail? Or is it? No. Oh, okay. Trail 17. Yeah, trail 17. Yeah, 17. Yeah, 17. Yeah. It had always been known, people called it Blodgett Trail, but it's Trail 17. Okay, then somewhere on the map. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so anytime you want to go over, I mean, again, it's a town trail. Yeah. So if you want to go early, you know, that's certainly go right ahead. Is that the trail that goes over to our side, or is it going the opposite way? Mm -hmm. Now it goes no. up to the top of the mountain. There's a yeah. uh, it used to be an old sawmill at the top. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think was that with the saw? Yeah, that was what it was for. Is an old sawmill way up top. Yeah. Okay. So what else, John? Uh, and, uh, and uh, I might just mention, well, Guy Martin's been very patient, so I mean, I... Oh, we appreciate so that. You so reach out to him yeah, as well yeah. and let him know. And, yeah. Um, you know, maybe it's something he wants to cut, I don't know. Okay. And then, um, the, the tree, um, we've gotten in, the tree at Blodges across the road from Blodges. We've gotten in um, two, right? One quote. Or just um, one quote. So far, and then next, next Friday, the 16th, um, Tree Works is going to look at it. Okay. So it'll be two quotes that we have. Okay. Did you reach out to a third person? You want to find somebody else? Well, why don't you just, um, well, Cal gave me the name of somebody that he had to take some trees down. 
and I, I did call okay. that person, but he's no longer in business. So, so, but he refers them to Snapping Turtle Tree Words. Okay. I've never heard of that in Northfield. Uh, I haven't, I haven't heard what about, is that, did someone reach out to, did Don have a guy? Yeah, that's the one I have. Okay. From so far. Okay. And he's got a guy. I can't think of he, he yeah, has, he's really good. He's, he has some different price just, just to take the tree down. I think it was 1500 But then he had different options about clearing the brush and so on and so forth. Okay. And I wasn't, you know, we weren't sure who was going to, do all the work, or if we wanted him to do it, right. or if the town was going to cart some things. I mean, the logs are, would be going to Guy Martin. What we say the logs, can you take the brush too? Okay. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. these would be fair, right? I don't know. Yeah, I, I suppose. Right. So we'll take a tree down for you, clean it up. Yeah. I mean, it is. Otherwise, we'll just chop it up and throw it on the side of the road, right, in the right away. Yeah. I think. Mean, All right. That's a couple hundred bucks to rent a chip or something. Yeah. 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 You know. It's not that. It's a it's a pine tree, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a fairly tall one with, without a lot of branches on it. So right. The tall pine. We'll it's just fun. cut the branches up and let them rot there or right. something. I think. I mean, it's it's not like it's so much front lawn. I mean, I went through a brush and so much front lawn, but it's, it's yeah. yeah. It's not in the middle of the woods. It seems high to cut down. 1500 seems really high to cut down the pine tree, personally. I mean, we had three giant pine trees cut down on our property, and it was 300 bucks. As long as it's not, and then one of them was close to our house. Yeah. So that was a guy that would scale the tree, cut it down, piece it down, and drop it for that's what, that's what he does. For 300 bucks. Yeah, I can try to get a quote. Yeah, 300? 300 bucks was the minimum. They did three trees, a giant white pine. And then uh, uh, a couple good sized spruces, and he did it all for the $300 million. I don't know. I, I'd do it for nothing. Like yeah. 50 50 that I wouldn't hit the house. Is that <laughs> is how close is it? Now, this isn't the one where there's a half property right there. Or yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. So it's right on the road, too. So. Oh, and then they have to shut down the road and all that, too. Right. Oh, right. okay. 1500 is reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's exactly when you were talking about trail and all this and all this. Yeah, no, it's right beside the room. Yeah, no. And our 1500 is more than reasonable. My son spent like 7000 to pick up the time out. Again, I um, think it's probably well, we get that taken care of. Okay. We'll do yeah. that. Some, yeah. Okay. Um, After okay. snapping trail, right? Yeah. I'll hear from Snapping yeah. Trail. Yeah. Um, I don't really have any communications. I have some old business stuff. Um, last time we were here, we, uh, as a group, decided not to go ahead and sign the, the um, Bliss Ridge alcohol permits. And, mm -hmm. uh, so Sherilyn kind of looked into that for me the next day and got a call from Ron, and Ron suggested that wasn't a very good idea um, because it's the select board cannot enforce a zoning uh, right. Fire violation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of, and there, yeah. and there's actually a, a precedent where select boards have done other things like that. So um, I went right. ahead and, and signed that. But what we did do is we did um, have Karen go ahead and give them a violation. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so they now, um, and the, the clock is ticking. They got it. Um, Last mid last week to conform, and that would include um, stopping any construction, uh, stopping any reservations, or such on, on the town, uh, not townhouses, the tree houses. Um, and she's looking into it, um, but they will be coming up with some type of uh, fine for the violations as well. It's a hundred dollars per incident. Um, Per day, so um, it'll be. A, but you know, we don't. We don't look at the blood here. We just want a little respects, and then realizing that we need to follow uh, the DRB's decisions either way, whether they like it or not. Um, 
so that's that's where that is. I haven't heard uh, anything since, but that is being um, followed. Um, it, it looks like they took the second. Yeah, I think it's a delightful um, trail. <laughs> I think they they took that down. There were some Instagram accounts that yeah. were talking about it as well, and those have ceased as well. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. So. I think they understand that we're doing business, and you know the town has been very good. And, and I know both Karen and Ron has been working with them to try to figure out a solution. And I think they've come up with you know a, a solution through um, Vermont Agriculture, right. uh, where there's uh, an opportunity for them to have on-farm teaching or, or some type of programs and use those. So I think they're going to be able to figure that out. Great. There will also be some um, movement with DRB is on um, a few variances, but um, you know, we're hopeful that they can probably work with them. But uh, in the meantime, there we're, um, you know, monitoring that. Um, and again, or not again, but we also did have a request from uh, their neighbor uh, for to come up and listen decibels, uh, there was um, they complained, and again I think um, you know it might be a little much, but they were making complaints about last year. But through our statutes, it looks like Karen needs to go up and monitor regardless of when the event was, because she's going to be there um, at the next couple of events to make sure that uh, the decibels at the so music at the wedding at the wedding was down right. Uh, okay, that's fine. So, all right. Um, and that's I think all we have there. Um, and as far as other old business, I don't know if there's anything down there that um, anyone sees that they want to chat about. But I think. <laughs> pretty much up to date on everything we need to do. Yeah, I, um, nothing that's down there, but I, I wanted to talk about the crosswalk again in the village. Um, I think it would be good to know what we're dealing with in terms of cost, you know, to cut the curb and to set it up prior to having the sidewalk. Um, and it's a, the sidewalk, it's the soonest would be going in, in 2025 now, I guess. If the if the wastewater goes in, well, 2024, if nothing happens with wastewater. And the grant expires next year. It expires next year. I thought Sherilyn said that she could get any. An extension no. Last I heard it was expiring next year, so it needs to be done. So it has to be done next year. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I would, I'd be curious to, to see. I, I thought that since Ray is right here anyway, he could probably yeah. you know, give yeah. us a, a yeah. ballpark. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Ray and, and Don and I can and meet with him or something. So the other thing on the plans. You know, and this is one of those things that we all kind of forget, but. Um, we still have a replacement on the sidewalk, you know, where it was cracked. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the guys are willing, they don't, at any more, they don't own the company or something, but they made an agreement with the town here through Ray that they would give us a check um, when we had an estimate or know how much it would cost to do that. So if we can talk to Ray about that, maybe that's something that we can get kind of worked in with something else, you know, not to cheap that cost, but to, you know, maybe get the cost down, all right, get someone in here to do both that piece and, and, the, step okay. and the step up there. I know we had talked about the guys doing some of the excavation work, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what their schedules are to do that, but, okay. but let's try to um, get some, some of the, at least where that crack has, because before we know, we'll forget about it and then it will be... Yeah. And where's the crack on the main sidewalk? Or yeah, no, on the main sidewalk, right past the general store. Um, and it's, yeah, it's where the trucks, yeah, you know, cut cut the corner. Yeah. 
and it wasn't okay. it was like three inches where it should really right. be six inches yeah so if they do that there then they can go you think and they go the other side right okay all right and um is there any new business yet? nothing all right so let's why don't we go ahead and sign sasha's stuff and then we get out of here Oh, you know what? I did want to bring up um, again old business we got. I can just talk to you sign. Um, the Frank Piazza yeah. uh, apartments. So we met John and I met uh, with, with uh, Ron, Frank, um, Jason, the guy doing the work. And right now we are trying to find a qualified contractor. If you guys know of anyone. Um, that would be willing to go in and um, take a look at what's been done so far. Okay. Uh, we need someone that would be willing, and someone you know, qualified has insurance, but would be willing to sign an affidavit. You know that the work has been done or the work has not been done, okay. um, and then that can, if the work has been done and it's done to a, an adequate, um, an adequate job, then we can push forward and get the work done. And if it isn't, then we can push the courts to push forward with the receivership. Okay. I don't know anyone who's certified. I'm certified. I'm certified. I'm certified. I'm certified. I'm certified. I'm certified. Also, the junkyard. Yeah. Came in and wanted their updated. Just yeah, well, they're not getting that kind of a long distance. Um, the place looks like hell down there, and we've been hearing from them that they're going to put up. He's been he came in and he's. Why don't you uh, reach out to him and ask him to come to a. Uh, which junkyard is this? Okay. The Matter Here, on, two. on Route 2, right yeah. on Route 2 across from the old landfill? Yeah. That one? Okay. Okay. Um, let's look at the dates. When the next, what's the next meeting? Yeah, so those, yeah, yeah, I would have happen come in there. Um, because that means substantial work before we should sign up on that. Yeah, I mean, most of these fences down. And yeah, it's a mess there. Thank you. 
What do we pay so much? One hundred ninety thousand. What do we? What's in here, Sasha? Uh, river road paving. That was the biggest one. And have you guys ever talked about where you want funds to come for that, right? Right. She submitted it for the grant, so hopefully we can get the money back to the university. I haven't done it. Well, there's a more signs. Oh, I did that one. Here's what's nice to look at. Go for it. There was a little more, and this is just the uh, uh, table for me. Oh, this one? Did you, are we going to sign this guy? Or do you already have this revolver? No, that's the uh, one. Or? No, we want to hear more from the uh, so is that sure, letter. Or? This is the extra copy. Right, that's the extra copy from the Clark gave us, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that we signed. That's the one we actually signed earlier. Okay, I thought so earlier. There's five lines on this page. Were we supposed to sign this to Sasha? Or no? This guy? Oh, uh, no, that was a far copy one. from me. Yeah, thank you. Select board minutes for approval for um, May 15th. I make a motion that we approve the select board minutes for May 15th. I'll second that with just one little change. Okay. Um, Sasha, I'm the assistant librarian. I know it's only pennies, but still, the rate of pay uh, is 1712. And it said in parentheses that's an additional dollar twelve. Yeah, the math didn't is just it's, right, but the but total was supposed to be seven percent. Seven seven percent of the it was said awesome. how much the she went seven percent of the sixteen dollars, I think, right? Was it that or was it the difference between what she was at and her raise? No, so they had moved it up. Um, to 16, they were paying the assistant librarian $16. $16.04. Right. It was, it was $14.99, went up to $16.04. And, and then, but this 7% in the minutes, it says bringing in the rate of pay to $17.12 per hour. Oh, which is dollar twelve, but it's really not. It should be right. It should be a dollar eight. Okay. So you got that? I was just going to look that up. Did you? It's actually square on that. Sixteen oh four plus one oh eight is what it should be. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so I make a motion we accept the minutes of March 15th with the amendment that John just described. Just described. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a second? And I'll second that. Very good. Very good. Uh, I'll favor vote aye. 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 All right. So I guess this is done. I would move to adjourn. Okay. So. Thank you, all Taylor. Right. 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 Thank you, folks, for uh, Thank you.